Hello, and welcome to Indie Encounter. My name is Mark Wilson Jordan. The mission of our show is to give independent performers and artists access to as wide an audience as possible, and to give you, our viewers, a window into their art, their artistic process, and why they have chosen their particular avenue to connect with the world. All art is about communication and connection. He is a columnist for the Burbank Leader and Glendale News Press. He writes the Small Wonders column, expositions on life and the world from his vantage as a stay-at-home dad, thinker, and citizen of the world. Let's meet today's indie artist, columnist, and author, Patrick Canaday. Patrick, welcome to Thank Indie you. Encounter. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Cool. So, you're doing something that many, many people would love to do, which is writing and giving your views about life and the world. <laughs> you have a new book. How did you get into it? Um, I started writing the column about uh, three years ago, actually, in 2008. Prior to that, I was never really writing. Uh, I always wanted to be a writer. That was always the side passion, the thing that I would pick up now and again and sit down and scribble some notes and uh, try to write something. But uh, it wasn't until 2008 that I started writing the column and, and uh, publish, getting published as a professional columnist. So um, how did you go about uh, getting that first column in there? Well, that was interesting. Um, uh, in the book, I, I kind of go into it, but uh, the way it worked was I read my local paper. I live in Burbank, and I would read the paper, and every once in a while I would see stories that just irked me. And um, after seeing so many people complain about this one issue in town, I decided I was going to write to the newspaper. So uh, as part of just a, taking a, a mental health day, I took the day off from work, and I sat at home, and I wrote an essay. Uh, basically telling people to lighten up and um, philosophizing about why are you complaining about this silly civic issue that's it, it was nonsense there was there was old railroad tracks running through town and they tore the old tracks out and and put money into putting a beautiful bike path with with grass and trees and it's a beautiful bike path for everybody to use but everybody was complaining about uh, the bikers in the walking lane and walkers in the biking lane and people going too fast and people going too slow and I just thought it was ridiculous. So I took a day to sit down and write my thoughts down and I sent it into the paper and they published it. They called me a couple days later and they published it. Uh, so that was kind of fun to see my name in print and uh, just to, uh, in the public forum page. Uh, about five days later I got a call from one of the editors. Um, I was working full time and he caught me as I was driving home from work and he said uh, you know we really like the piece that you sent us last week we go to press in a few hours and I had another article that I was gonna run but it fell out and would you happen to have something available right now that you could send to me so I ran home and I dusted off uh, just some other little silly essay that I'd scribbled down and used in a, uh, a work newsletter and sent it into him and it ran the next day um, and then a week went by and I decided I'm going to try again and I sent one more letter in, another me just philosophizing about life and I sent it into the paper. And after I sent the third one in, they called me up uh, and said, we're going to run that third piece, but we were wondering if you'd like to do this every week. Uh, would you come in and talk to us about being one of our weekly columnists? And I told them I'm not a writer and I'm not a journalist by any means. But uh, sure, I'll, I'll come in and we spoke. And uh, I had a brief conversation with the editor at the time where I told her, I, I don't know how to do this. Uh, can we do it once a month, maybe? And she said, nope, every week. <laughs> every week Every or week, nothing. 800 words or we don't do this. <laughs> and I said, I don't think I could do that. She says, I think you can. Go down the hall, get your picture taken, come up with some ideas, and we'll start in a month. You had already proven that you had opinions. Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Um, I guess, but I, I think I'm one of those lucky columnists that I don't have to write about City Hall. I don't have to write about the state of our economy. Um, what I try to write about are people. Um, I try to write about human emotions, uh, things that we're all going through. 
Um, sometimes it's, I'm talking about my kids and parents associate through that. Sometimes I do talk about politics, but it's not as a, uh, a city hall watchdog, it's as a human, uh, like you said, a citizen of the world. And I try to get people to see that through a different uh, view, uh, so to speak. So I'm lucky that I don't have to do that, um, you know, watching City Hall, and um, I get to just have fun with it. Uh, and you write about things that are of interest to you. Most of the time. <laughs> uh, and the trick is to find a way to write about what I think is interesting, but yet make it interesting in and an appealing interesting way. for somebody else. I, my goal, and when I get feedback from people, the the the, what I strive for the most is for people to say, I know exactly what you were feeling. You said it exactly the way I would have said it if I knew how to say it. But when people give me feedback, when they say that I caught that moment or I caught that emotion and I explained it in such a way that it, it, it gave words to their emotion, that's when I've done my job. That's when I feel the most rewarded in writing. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Now, you said at the time you started your column, mm -hmm. you were fully employed. I was, yes. Something happened? Uh, yeah, I was working full time uh, in the entertainment industry in a decidedly uncreative capacity, very technical work. So writing for me on the side was uh, a good release. It was a, it was a nice way for me to explore the creative and then yet go to work 40, 50 hours a week and, and be very technical. Um, about six months into writing for the one newspaper, the Burbank Leader, um, they asked me if I would like to be published in their sister newspaper, the Glendale News Press. And I grew up in Glendale, and I live in Burbank, so it was a perfect way to bridge both, where I could be, I could, I could contribute to both cities um, w w through my column. And after that, um, I really started to think maybe there's more I could be doing with this, um, m more writing I could do. If I only had time, I could write the column and a book. Um, and then as fate would have it, the economy tanked and everything started to fall apart around uh, all of us. And the company I was working for slowly started going out of business. Uh, I had a long conversations with my wife and we decided that if, if the company I was working for was going to go under and if I was going to lose my job, maybe it was time for me to take a sabbatical and uh, throw myself into being a full-time writer. And that's exactly what happened. The universe called you on the it. The universe huh? called me on it. You, <laughs> be careful what you wish for, because you might just get it. And it, it, everything did fall into place perfectly. She had uh, recently graduated from nursing school and was working full time. Uh, so we had her paycheck as well as her health benefits. And um, it gave me a chance to spend more time with my kids and have more time writing. Um, so. Yeah, in that sense, it did all kind of fall into place, and that's when I started what I call my sabbatical year of being a writer slash house dad. Cool. Yeah. So after the initial terror <laughs> of becoming unemployed, what did you do? How did you approach your writing? Um, then it was finding the routine. You, you have to find, as a writer, you have to find the way, the, the routine that works best for you. Uh, for some people, they work best at night. Um, uh, some people work best at a coffee house or a library. Um, it took me a few months to find the rhythm of taking the kids to school, coming home, having a cup of coffee, doing a little reading, and then at nine o'clock, as it you know, like I was going to work, uh, to sit down and write, whether I liked it or not. You sit down and you write, and it took a few months for me to find that and to be able to do that. In the past, I'd always written on the side at night, in the morning, whenever I could squeeze the time in. So you're relying heavily on inspiration. Um, when what I found was if you really wanted to call yourself a writer and you, you were serious about it, you have to take that as serious as you would a day job, as you would if you were going to the office. So it became a little process of learning how to write in a structured environment. But and you also had a weekly deadline. And a weekly deadline, which frankly helps because um, I think many people left to their own devices in a creative endeavor would be lazy. And I don't feel inspired today, so I'm not going to write. I'm not going to, I'm going to go to the beach today. I'm going to go to the park. I'm going to seek out inspiration. And um, sometimes you have to force inspiration to come. And sometimes, you, you, but I think most of the time as a writer, 
you have to you have to sit down and just do it just sit down and grind through it and more often than not when you sit down and force yourself to write inspiration follows so oh. yeah plus you have the added inspiration of knowing that you're going to turn in something mm -hmm. it actually is going to get published correct that helped. There's also the terror of other people are going to read it. So yes. <laughs> are they going to be rolling their eyes when they read yeah. it? Or are they going to go, yeah, you nailed that one. Yeah. I, I think I still, after a few years here, I still sometimes have that fear when I put it out. But certainly in the first year, um, I had no idea what people responded to. And it, it is nice having that deadline. It forces me to write every week. It forces me to be creative every week. Um, but yeah, you do fear what people are going to think and say and certainly the first year of doing it I, I had no idea what um, how, what people responded to and I was often surprised at what they did respond to uh, and it was I, I get the most response when I write about human topics about emotions and feelings and things I'm going through and allowing people to see their own life through me I get the least response when I'm writing about something uh, having to do with uh, just city issues you know, oh, I, I don't get a lot okay. of response to that, but tap into human emotions. When, when my grandmother died, I wrote about it. Um, when Father's Day rolls around, I think about my relationship with my father, and I write about that. Uh, or Mother's Day. Um, and when I write about those things and bring up those, the emotions that I feel, and sometimes it's scary to do that because I feel, uh, I feel like I'm being self-serving by doing it. Uh, but I found that if you put yourself out there and write about these emotions, your own emotions. People thank you for doing that, and it gives them liberty to reach out as well and express themselves. So it's something about which you're an expert. Yes. The way you feel. <laughs> exactly. I'm probably the, the biggest topic of my column, because I, I tend to write about things I'm going through, if, whether I'm happy or sad. Uh, I write about that, and, and hopefully I do it in a way that people see themselves. So here's an interesting question, or at least I think it's interesting. Uh -huh. Do you get grief from other guys because you're talking about your emotions? And do you get <laughs> kudos from women because you're a guy who will talk about your emotions? On the latter, I think I get more response from women. Uh, I would say the majority of the feedback I get each week is from women. Um, uh, I get feedback from men when I complain about the Dodgers, um, <laughs> when I talk about my barbecue, uh, my man cave, uh, things like that. I get I, that's when the men respond. But I think if I'm just purely talking about emotions, usually it's more women than men. Um, I thankfully don't get too much uh, negative feedback. Um, a long time ago, a, a very well-known columnist, Al Martinez, who I, I've done some work with. Uh, he wrote for the LA Times for 30 some years. He told me that feedback, it, when you get good feedback, you, you're in luck. Um, or if you get no feedback, it's because people agreed with you. When you get feedback that's, you, the most often you'll get negative feedback is if people don't agree with you. So I don't get a lot of that. And sometimes I don't get any feedback, so I take that as a good sign. Okay. Yeah. But, Not uh, that they're ignoring you, the, it's just a good sign. Well, I, I have to believe they're not ignoring me, but uh, sure, as a writer, you tend to, um, you know, you, you tend to think you're putting yourself out there. You are writing every week, and if somebody doesn't respond to that, there is a bit of um, angst. Uh, why isn't anybody responding? I, I thought that was a good column. I thought that I thought I tapped into some emotions, but nobody's responding. And, and that's, especially since they could actually go to the website for either of your newspapers and send you email yeah. or. Whatever. So oh, you're, you're available every, for their comments. Yes. Every week the, my email address is there as, as is my invitation to friend me on Facebook and I get a lot of feedback through those uh, channels, but yeah. Okay. So yeah. It, it's, it's not total silence. No. It's not total silence. Okay. No. So this new book mm -hmm. that uh, you've, you're having so much fun with, I understand, <laughs> promoting. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about uh, Crooked Little Birdhouse. Crooked Little Birdhouse is a, is a book that's a collection of uh, some of the reader favorite and my favorite columns um, over the last few years. 
I, once I started writing a column, uh, people would write me and ask, when, are you going to put out a book that's a collection of the columns? So when I had my sabbatical year, I collected my favorites and the ones that people responded to the most, and I put them into a, a collection. And I also took it as a time to write a bit deeper, to write uh, 5,000 words instead of 800 words. So the book is about half previously published columns and half new essays, longer essays, exploring the same topics but doing it in a deeper way, in a way that's maybe not appropriate for the newspaper, um, where I could get more involved and deeper. Um, so it's, it's uh, thematically laid out so that uh, hopefully the reader uh, has, sees a beginning, middle, and end to what I'm trying to get to. So, so you're leaving us down the garden path. Exactly. As it were. And Crooked Little Bird House was actually an essay that I wrote uh, five, six years ago. Uh, just one of those times I sat down and wrote something. And it was about an experience of uh, building a birdhouse with my daughter, who at the time I think was five. And um, so I held on to that. And when, it, when I wanted to publish the book, I used that as kind of the centerpiece essay uh, for the whole book. And the, t the title of the book is Crooked Little Birdhouse, obviously. Um, so that's, that's what the book is. It was, uh, the, the, it, it, was, it was my chance in my sabbatical year that I was giving myself to be that writer house dad to get something published and to put some more broad thoughts out there than I was able to do in the column. Good. Congratulations for doing that. Thank you. Now, I understand it's self-published. Yes, it is. And, of course, you're going through the whole promotion phase of doing uh, signings and yes. teas and <laughs> coffees and yes. all that good stuff. Now, you've put together a little promo piece mm -hmm. that you brought today, and I think we're going to see that, and then when we come back, we'll talk right. a little bit about the the piece itself that you okay. put together, and we'll talk about your the wonderful experiences you're having promoting your book. Okay. All right. Great. So let's see that promo. Someone always asks, what would you want to do if you could do anything? And my answer was always that I would be a writer. I never took myself seriously as a writer, but when I sent a letter into my local newspaper, they did take me seriously. And from that simple letter to the editor, a newspaper columnist was born. My name is Patrick Cannonay, and I write a weekly column that appears in several Los Angeles area newspapers. It's called Small Wonders, and it's not your typical newspaper column. I'm not a political pundit, nor am I a voice for the masses. I've never even opened the business section, and my sports fanaticism is limited to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Hell, I'm not even a journalist. I'm just a guy who likes to write, and somehow got his own newspaper column. Crooked Little Birdhouse is a collection of my favorite and reader's favorite columns that have appeared in the newspapers. But there are also a series of new essays, longer pieces that have never been published before. And in them, I take a look at the world and my life from the perspective of a writer and house dad. The result of what I discovered about myself may surprise you. It surprised me. Whether I'm writing about other people or myself, my kids or someone else's kids, something happening right now in the world, or maybe something from a long time ago. I look for the nut, that small wonder, if you will. I try to give the reader a new view of something old, because there are really no new stories or feelings, just new ways of looking at them. There's enough bad news out there, enough anger and slander and casting stones. I want to give people a break from all that. No matter what I'm writing about, I want people to know that they aren't alone, and that there is always something to hope for in the world.
congratulations Thank on that you promo. Much. So tell me about the promo. Well, I'm not a professional editor. Hopefully that came across. Uh, but I did put that together myself. Um, when you self-publish, you have to self-promote. You don't have the luxury <laughs> of a, uh, a, a large publisher's marketing division behind you. Um, and doing book promos is something that um, is very common in publishing now. So um, that's just something I pieced together in order to have a, a visual uh, sales pitch. Um, so I've used it in various capacities, uh, and now I just kind of keep it on the website and uh, used as a sales tool uh, oh, okay. while I self-promote. So if people wanted to see it again, they could see it by going to your website. Yes. Which is right. www.patrickcanaday.com? Correct. And Canada is C-A-N-E-D-A-Y? That's right. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. right, yeah. So, self-promotion. Yeah. Isn't it fun? No. <laughs> it's not. I, I, I think that the majority of people who consider themselves writers are um, loath to get up in public. Um, sure, I bet you there's a lot that are good at it, but I think writers in general, and maybe I'm speaking about myself, mostly um, don't like to self-promote. Um, we like to hide behind the newspaper. We like to hide behind a book, um, or at least I do. I'd rather my thoughts and emotions be out there uh, and I can be a safe distance from that. So I, I don't take to the self-promotion uh, very easily, but yet I, I, I do it. I have to do it. And we were able to drag you here kicking and screaming. I know. It was, I, I didn't want to come, but, <laughs> but I'm glad I did. I'm usually glad I do. When I, when I do something that I, I fear, I'm usually glad I did it. Good. Yeah. And you have uh, an actual public appearance coming up here pretty soon, don't you? Yes. Uh, we're going to be having a book signing uh, July 16th, Saturday, July 16th, at a coffee house in Burbank called Simply Coffee. Uh, it's a coffee house that probably half the book was written at because that's where I would spend much of my time. And they were gracious enough to host a, uh, a book signing. Uh, and a in fact, leading up to the book signing, there's a, a one wall that's an art exhibit wall. And there's an ongoing daily changing art exhibit that's leading up to uh, uh, the book signing that we're having on the 16th. Oh, so cool. Something you can check out if you go on Facebook. Uh, you can see each day's new image. And where it will end is uh, a large exhibit of an, uh, one of the essays. Um, but a very creative um, artist friend of mine is, is uh, the gentleman who actually did the cover of my book has been doing this ongoing art exhibit at the coffee house as well, uh -huh. Alistair Milne. So um, yeah, it's been, it's been very fun. So it's a, a little bit bigger than just your typical book signing. Um, uh, we're going to be having a lot of fun. There will be a lot of people there. Uh, so Saturday, July 16th at Simply Coffee in Burbank. Yeah. So from, it's from 5 to 8 p.m. Art and coffee yes. and books and Patrick Kennedy. And me. And crepes. Oh. Yes. Okay. Gregory, the French uh, proprietor at the coffee house, is uh, an avid crepe maker. So we're going to have crepes as well. And so if people just happen to miss that particular event, mm -hmm. they should probably check out your website because you'll be continuing to, to schedule these yes. uh, public events in which you actually get out from behind the yeah. word processor. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we'll be moving around and having them at different places, maybe some bookstores, uh, independent bookstores and, and other coffee houses. There will be more book signings, yeah. So Good. Yeah, they can always Good. check the website and uh, I keep uh, current dates posted for upcoming events. And uh, again, I invite people to friend me on Facebook uh, because I'm always publishing stuff on Facebook, using social media to uh, reach as many people as possible. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. And then what's next? Oh. I have several books in my head that are trying to come out, and it's just a matter of finding enough time to get them out. Uh, I continue to write the column. Uh, that's a good uh, exercise. It's a good way to simply keep writing and forcing yourself to write and to be published. But there's much more that I want to do in writing, much more. Uh, so some of the books are trying to come out, and it's just a matter of finding the time to get them all done and, and be. Uh, a father and a husband and uh, not go insane and try to force <laughs> myself to do too much. And go back to work because you and, also... And work, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It, it's a lot on your plate, but uh, yeah. you know, you're young, you're energetic. <laughs> Just Thank do you. it. Yeah. 
It's that easy. <laughs> easy for me to say, it's right? It's that easy. <laughs> yeah. Patrick, thank you for coming today to thank talk you. to us about Crooked Little Birdhouse. Good luck with the project and good luck with your career and your family. Thank you very much, Mark. All right. This has been Indie Encounter, a journey into the world of the independent creators of art and artistic communication. I want to thank today's guest, Patrick Canaday, for sharing his vision and observations of the world. If you want to find out more about today's guest, check him out on the web at www.patrickcanaday.com or read his column online at www.burbankleader.com. Oh, that's sort of bad. Check out our website. You know the website. <laughs> you know the convention. Check out our website here at PasadenaCommunityNetwork.com and select the Arroyo channel. You may also check out my website, MarkWilsonJordan.com or OneForMark.com for additional contact information. Thanks to our director, Lilia Fernandez-Gaspar and crew for making the show possible. Thanks to all of you for watching. We hope to see you here again when we embark on another Indie Encounter.